course, nobody's come around forever. And as soon as they set up, it's like Grand Central Station here. Now a train is coming by. 15th at F90. So I'm gonna try my old trick of I'm metering off the highest white values, and then I'm gonna open up two stops, and that should, uh, I use that from all my other film, that should give me a meter reading that I'm used to work with. So 15th at F45 with this 80 speed film. Let's try this out. This will go, this little church will go perfectly with my little white churches of the prairies series. And testing the highlight values of this film and the shadow detail. Uh, there's a lot happening in this scene. So this will give me uh, a good indication of what this film will do in the highlights. One of the other things that I want to say too is when you're photographing architecture like this, buildings, the great thing is, is you can have the back parallel and the front parallel and then all the lines are proper. You don't have those converging lines that go up and uh, so that's why I really love shooting architectural buildings or architecture, I should say, with a large format because you don't get those weird lines anywhere. Um, and this is a cool little white church. I'm gonna have to see how I can get into it somehow at one time to photograph the interior. I am out here on this lovely day on the Canadian prairies. It's still winter. We've been doing nothing but shoveling. We've had a long, hard winter. We have a little reprieve. It's supposed to be nice today and it's supposed to get really cold again. So I wanted to test out some new film. I'm testing out this Cat Labs 80 film. It's supposed to be the, like Pan Kodak Panatomic X or the old Polaroid Ilford Type 55 type of film. And I'm going back out into the grasslands in the winter time and I'm gonna shoot some stuff and I was wondering if I could use this film because this kind of film really interests me. The Cat Labs film is an 80 ISO film, so very slow film, but extremely fine grain. You can develop it with a bunch of different developers. I'll be using my regular HC110 and Dilution B to develop it. But today is gonna to be just going out. I'm shooting a couple things you know, on the prairies to continue this prairie work that I always do. Some white churches, I'm working on this little white church project. But today is basically going out and testing this film out because I haven't shot it before, testing the developer, seeing how it holds up on these highlights with the snow, kind of these extreme contrast conditions. And I'm gonna try it out. I'm using my Chamonix 4x5, of course. I'm gonna try some landscapes out, some buildings out. Uh, a couple, I'm looking for a couple variations on what I'm gonna photograph to see how the images turn out which I'm gonna be uh, really interested in, in in how they print as well, because the film is a really good price, as we know, prices of uh, film are skyrocketing, going cr like crazy, but hopefully they will uh, slow down here a little bit. Fifteen, sixty-four and a half, forty-five and a half, thirty-two and a half. 
32 and a half. This is where you see these extreme, this is where these cameras really come into their own, these extreme angles. And if, you, if I were to shoot up like this, it would be super converging lines. And so I moved the back so it's parallel with the subject and the front standard parallel with the subject. Some rise and then things will look much more natural than you're looking up at this great old water tower that I've wanted to photograph for a while. The focal plane shutter to the point where I actually think it might get pretty close to a thousandth of a second. For my last set of photos for testing this film, I wanted to do a still life. Everything that I've photographed has been outside and, been in, and has been in pretty contrasty light. So I'm gonna build my little studio here and I'm doing a couple pictures for a cookbook that I'm working on in black and white. And I'm gonna block everything off and flag off all the light. So the light will be pretty low contrast, more subdued. They recommend shooting this film at ISO 50 if you're working inside. So I'm gonna rate this at ISO 50 and I'm going to do a little still life here and see how this film handles this. And I'm gonna take you through quickly. It'll be pretty easy metering for this scene. And I have a little bit of tilt on my camera, on the front of the camera to get everything in focus here. It's a great thing about shooting four by five. So I'm gonna Go through this quickly and we're gonna see how this film works in a studio setting like this. So here's my final thoughts on this film. I like this film a lot. A lot of times with some of these cheaper films, the base can be thinner, you can, it can scratch up a lot easier, it can be a little harder to handle. I didn't find that with this film at all. You also have to remember one of the big pluses of this Cat Labs film is it's only $35 for a box of 25, whereas Ilford FP4 now 
is $60 a box. So it's quite a savings. I would really recommend this film for amateurs, people starting out learning how to shoot. But I found this film has a great tonal range. I really like the tones and you know the highlights and the shadows. Um, it prints up really well. I was really impressed with this film. Of course, it's a fine grain film. It's only 80 ISO, so there's virtually no grain on it. I developed it in Kodak HC110 Dilution B, according to the Times. One of the things I did find about this film is that inside where it recommended that you rate this film at 50 ISO, I found that I probably could have kept it at 80 ISO. The, uh, the film was a little overexposed. Also, they don't have a reciprocity table for this film. And I knew I had to put in some reciprocity time when I was doing the studio close-up of the cheeses and the grapes. And uh, I did a little bit of digging and it said rate the film for Ilford FP4, and, which I did. And again, I found that it was a little overexposed. Not a lot, but probably could have knocked off at least 10 seconds to the overall exposure. Um, and certainly with black and white, you can print that down. So it's not a huge thing, but I don't think for reciprocity, it's quite accurate on Ilford FP4. And I think I could have rated it at 80 ISO. I think I would have been happier with the negatives. But overall, really impressed with the Cat Labs film. I'm gonna photograph some portraits next and see how that works out and see how the skin tones work out with this film. But again, for the price, I think this is a really great film. And that's one of the things that we're facing today is these high prices with film. The one issue I had with one of the sheets is this one here. There was some kind of weird modeling going on. Um, I don't know exactly what was happening here and I don't think it was my developing. When I developed the two sheets of film from the same shoot, I did it in a Jobo Expert tank and both sheets go in the same hole. So they were done at the same time. They were done in the same developer. Everything was done exactly the same way. They were washed the same way. So I'm pretty sure it was this sheet of film and not my developing. And I'm not exactly sure what's happening, but that was a bit of a concern. I'm gonna uh, do another batch of 10 and see if this problem comes up again. Um, I would be interested to see. In full disclosure, I bought this pack of film. Uh, Cat Labs had nothing to do with this uh, review or me looking at this film. This video was totally done on my own. Thanks for watching. I am away from Canada. I'll give you a little hint of where I am and where my next video is going to come from. But don't forget to subscribe, give me a like, and let me know if you've tried this film and what you think of it. See you next time. Cheers.